Okay, I'll go for some ultramarine now, so it's a bit more red, dominant. The cobalt's fairly neutral, but the ultramarine blue has a bit more red in it. And as we're going up higher into the sky, that's what happens. It's a little bit greener down low and a little bit redder up higher. All right, well, that's pretty much it now. All good to go. Just got to put a clear primer on that. Three clear primers for a nice protective coat. So it still looks like it's raw linen, but it's got the protective coat so the oil paint doesn't soak in. All right, let's get into it. Let's get our bush and start painting. Okay, now a little example on how I attach these slats. These are five mil marine ply. And what I do is I attach them to the back of the linen or the stretch canvas or whatever I'm using at the time. They both go on like so. And what that does, it allows it to slide into my plain air box in the trailer. And also it's very easy to attach it to the easel if I'm working on one of the little easels or the big outdoor trailer easel. Either one, it's a fantastic way to clamp the painting to the easel but most importantly putting it in the plain air trailer once it's wet because of course oil paint stays wet for who knows how long maybe a week or so stick it in the box sits this far away from the next painting you've got a whole row of paintings so you can be out for a week or so painting plain air have heaps of west paintings dusty roads it's all dust proof you can just fly along the paintings don't get damaged they're fantastic once you get home all right so basically yeah i'll just tech screw those little little ones Got a few little screws like so, pretty simple, just tech screw them on. Just grab one of these screws, now they can go in that hole, it's already there. Like so, and as you can see, now she's attached. Alright, so one of the many plain air boxes, I've got two in the back of the car, this is the car here, got two in the back of the car. These boxes, they open like so. And I've got one massive one, or actually two in the trailer as well, one for the canoe and the massive one for the big paintings. Anyway, so when you've got the slats like that, you can have a picture as tall as so, and it'll still fit into the same box. Or you can have a smaller one like this, any size, as long as it's no bigger than the box itself. Just go like so, and then they slide, not touching. Now to give an example, look at the size of this one. As you can see, you can also fit very big pictures. As long as it's no taller than the box itself or longer, it'll slide in on those slats. Absolutely perfect setup. Got the car fridge here, so 12 volt system, solar panels on the roof, so we're all self-sufficient there. Basically, it's a smooth running machine once you're out there. It's taken a bit to set it all up, but once I've got it all, it means I can paint I can paint a lot of pictures out bush. I can have a lot of food to keep me going. And it's all self-sustaining with solar panels and whatever else. All right. Now I'll give you an example on the size and whatever the box is in the plain air trailer itself. I'll just open this up. Okay, so we've got our main big box here. Let's just open that. The main big box, and that will take exceptionally large paintings. Let me just bring the camera in and have a closer look. We'll come right in if we can. Let's have a look, what do we got? Let's get right in there. Okay, there we go. Now, 
you'll see a huge range of different size ones here. I've got little short ones, longer ones. You can fit all sorts in. So like I was saying, now I can take tons of paintings. I've got a dust seal around the edge. The trailer itself has the gas struts to open the door, very instant. It has dust seal as well. So we've got double layer dust seal. Dust seal for this, dust seal for this. And the best part of having the gas struts and the door opening this way is all of a sudden I've got immediate shade the moment I open it, immediate shade from the sun. If it's raining, I've got immediate protection, like a little tarp up or whatever else. Been on a long trip to get to the, the location, the plein air location. You can grab a bite to eat, just straight away open this, sit down here, have a bite to eat, you've got nothing. As soon as you're ready to go, just grab it, down she comes again and away you go. So that's all very simple. Heaps of room in here for the paints, the swags, whatever else. Got the 12 volt system on this one as well, solar panels. So pretty much got the cooking arrangement, billies and camp ovens. Pretty much got everything. All the clamps for holding the paintings onto the easels. Let's go take a look at the easel on the side of this trailer while we're at it. Okay, well here's the easel. Now it's been a really great setup. The reason I really enjoy painting with this is you can still get into some fantastic locations, get some great compositions. But at the same time, if there's any wind, having the big wall itself keeps you at keeps you out of the wind. So, now those little slats on the back of the painting, they clamp on there and there very easily, just a few little clamps, builder's clamps. Let me just grab one here. Couple of builder's clamps like so. It's clamped on, top and bottom, painting's hooked on, easy as that. Or, if I want to, what I can do is unclip this easel and actually fold the easel out sideways so instead of the easel being against the trailer itself, it sticks out along here. So depending on where the composition and view is, you can move the easel around. That's great for a lot of different varieties and different locations. Sometimes you can't back the trailer up exactly where you want it, but if you open the easel up, all of a sudden you've got a different view, so it's a lot easier. On the whole, it's been a great thing for painting really large scale plein air paintings on site. So really handy stuff. Got an awning on top to stay out of the sun or rain or whatever else. Okay, so now I've got a selection of paint, quite a large selection of paint. I always take way more paint than I need, so that way I'm never stingy. And because I use palette knives, because I use the big palette knives and whatever else, it does go through a fair, bit, a fair amount of paint, as you probably guess. But at the same time, by having so much paint on board, you're never stingy, so you haven't got that kind of scrappy look. You've got plenty of buttery movement in the work, and that's always the way to go. Sometimes one of the bonuses with these tins, what you can do is if you've put too much on the palette, as long as the paint's still pure and you haven't mixed it with other colours, you can scrape it off, dump it back in the tin, bang the tin down so the oil paint goes back flat again, a bit of bang, bang, bang with the lid on, and that will last for quite a while. So you are kind of recycling the paint, not wasting it all. Then we've got these cartridges. They're great too. Bring a cartridge gun. You can. Uh, it's a cheaper way than just buying in the tubes itself, but of course I've also got tubes. Now as far as the uh, little easel, we've got the big easel as you saw, but then we've got the fold out little easel here. And if we can, and open her up. I find these easels, as you know, are very great, very good for climbing hills, getting away from the car when there's, there's always gonna be locations where you can't be near your vehicle probably more often than not actually. Lucky thing about the outback of Australia and all those sort of areas, big open expanses so quite often you can get your vehicle into position. But of course normally you can't so you deal with a smaller easel. Got all my paints on board. Pallet knives now. I really usually only take two pallet knives. I've got a few more here on board but I usually only take that one there. It's got a great flex on it and a slightly smaller one if I need it. I have got a few other different shapes and sizes, but I never use them. And a nice little flex one here, but like I said, hardly ever use that. It's all about these two. Pretty much always this one until I've almost finished the painting. Try and do as much as I can with that. Maybe a few little marks with this one towards the end. All right, now getting to talking about the actual palette knives I use. I use an Australian brand, Art Spectrum, quite often, but I also use Liquitex, and I find Liquitex 
pallet knives. Uh, absolutely fantastic stuff. They have just the right amount of flex and whatever else you need. And I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. Okay, so two pallet knives, one really big one here and one here, and they look similar, everything looks kind of similar. But this pallet knife is absolutely exceptional compared to this one. And the reason is, it's all about the stiffness and the flex in the blade itself. Now this starts off here very stiff, very stiff through this section, it won't bend hardly at all, but it quickly, as it tapers off, becomes extremely flexible. And that's very important. This one here starts off stiff, but as it gets toward the end, it stays fairly stiff. So there's a lot of stiffness on the end as well. It doesn't sort of bend and fold away. Now I find that when I'm painting, that can be a problem, that stiffness on the end. You want it to feather off. You want it to be stiff here and then feather off. And the reason you do is because when you applied a lot of paint, as you're trying to smooth it out, by pushing onto the canvas, the top end of this feathers off and doesn't dig in, so it leaves a smooth mark. Whereas if you've got a knife like this, where it's stiff on the end, as you push in, the top end seems to press into the canvas and then pushes into the wet paint, the thick wet paint, and leaves a harsh mark. And it's hard to get rid of those marks with that when you've got a stiff knife on the end. That's why I always say, go for a knife that's thick here and feathers off to nothing on the end. And you'll find that your knife work, knife work tends to be fairly hard to start with, fairly harsh looking. You'll find it's a lot softer if you've got that feathering off on the end. So I always do that when I'm looking for a purchasing a pellet knife. I always feel that and make sure she's got a nice feather on the end. A very important thing. All right, enough of that. All that being said, let's get out there and uh, start painting, shall we? Perfect weather for it, cannot wait. Okay, now, because I travel on a lot of bumpy outback roads, everything is strapped down. So in the back of the, the, back of the truck here, this easel is hooked in, all strapped down so everything doesn't move when you're rocking around. Okay, so here we go. Move that strap out of the way. It drops in there. Sits in there. Okay. This all winds up. So, pull her in tight. And there you go. So now, she's stuck in. Alright, so we've got the kitchen table on the side, mobile kitchen, just fold that away. Just checking that uh, checking that it's all working. Got the water down here, water pump, so I've got plenty of water on board. Got the whole thing. So I hope you've enjoyed the tour of what I do when I'm setting up or all, all the equipment I use, from stretching the linens to the paint I use to the way I store the wet paintings in the trailer itself. I hope you've enjoyed the whole tour. Now we need to get out there and start painting. I cannot wait to get out there. I've got all the gear now, as you've seen. I want to get out there and start painting. All right, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you out there.